little bit of rain as we roll into commerce here, but I'm excited to see Mickey Mantle's boyhood home. And here you can see we are on Mickey Mantle Boulevard entering town. We're gonna make a left on commerce, which was the old historic Route 66. Mickey used to spend his days in this small mining town watching the trains go by. Let's take a stop off and look at this water tower. I think you'll see something familiar to you. Here you can see the Commerce Water Tower and you can see that great number seven with the pinstripes painted up there. That is for Mickey. Now what's crazy is that the Yankees, when they would give any player an early number, that was given to you as a sign that you are expected to not only be great, but you are expected to be a legend. And originally when Mickey signed with the Yankees for $1,100 and when they first brought him onto the team, brought him up from the minors, he was given number six. He didn't do so well. Then they dropped him down and eventually he would make number seven synonymous with the great Mickey Mantle, a man who many would say would be the motivation for all young boys to want to play baseball. He was the quintessential baseball player, the good looking all American boy with a smile. He could run, he could field, he could hit, he could do everything. He could take the Yankees to 10 World Series. He could take them to seven championships, take himself to three MVPs, and it all started in this town right here, Commerce, Oklahoma. Now Commerce was originally a mining town and Mickey's father worked in the zinc mines. He was a boss down there and it was a dangerous job and so that was one of the things that Mickey's father, Mutt, didn't want for his son. He didn't want him to have that kind of life and so he instilled a love of sports, primarily baseball, and they had a standing um, appointment every day that I'll tell you about when we get over to the house. This is the main drag here in Commerce where Mickey would have hung out growing up. The post office. Pretty nice Dairy King here right at the uh, corner of Route 66. You know, Mickey's hometown is small, but it's not without its charm. I love this. Take a look. Alien filling station. <laughs> just to think that, that that drag that we just drove down, Mickey and his buddies would have played up and down that street when he was a kid in the 30s and 40s. This old Model T. And if you've seen Once Upon a Time in the West, you recognize that logo. That's what Brad Pitt's character Cliff Booth wears on his shirt through the whole movie, The Champion. Like I said, it does have its charm. Next stop, the boyhood home where Mickey Mantle learned how to switch head. Now we're making a turn into Mickey's neighborhood here. Here's the church just across the street from Mickey's house. Now what's cool is that the city has not turned his house into a museum, but what they've done is nobody lives there and it's designated a historical spot. So you can just come visit at any time. Now this is not just a home that Mickey Mantle lived in. This is the home. This was his entire upbringing. This is where he learned to play. This is where he was, where he signed his contract to be a Yankee right out of high school. So this is big, big deal for baseball fans. So right here on the other side of this little creek is the boyhood home of Mickey Mantle. Take a look at this. I mean, I knew who he was from, gosh, I would probably say four years old because I got into collecting baseball cards and Mickey Mantle was the most famous baseball card of all time. Part of the reason for that was because his rookie card came out in a year 
when they almost gave up on baseball cards. They had really only been doing them for a couple of years. And um, the man that created them actually threw the entire 1952 um, production line basically into the Hudson River. So what has survived are really valuable and Mickey's Rookie was that in that year. So he was actually responsible, a lot of people say, for launching the baseball card craze. But this was his childhood home. This is where he and his family lived. And that barn is where he learned to play baseball. Check this out. Like I said, his dad wanted a better life for him. So every day at 4 p.m., his dad would get off work and Mickey would be waiting right here on this porch. His dad would come home and then for the rest of the day, it said from Mickey's brother and everyone that knew Mickey said that every single day, he would come over here and stand in front of this barn and they would have a home plate right there at the doorway. Mickey's father would throw right-handed and Mickey's grandfather would throw left-handed and until the sun went down every single day, they would pitch right here to Mickey. His childhood friends said that this was, they would basically hang out here and they would just shag balls for him. They said that he would stand right here with a plate, swinging away and the balls would all fly over top of the house so they would be chasing the home run balls over the house. We gotta go take a look inside, don't we? Look at this. I mean, Mickey Mantle was one of the greatest. I mean, I would say easily, unarguably top 10 of all time baseball players. Wow. Look at that. Piles of wood, that's one of the original sides that piece of metal over there looks like people have been camping out here occasionally gosh would that that would have been the original hinging the original nails i'm such a nerd about this kind of stuff but i just love it i mean that would have been the workbench obviously so somewhere in here mickey would have kept his baseball bat you know wouldn't you think now, Mickey was a phenomenal athlete here in town. He played all sports, but he really excelled at baseball. And one of the great stories that they told was um, when his dad took him to see the St. Louis Cardinals. Where we're at now is not too far from Missouri. I mean, we're right pretty close to the border. And in fact, when Mickey would play minor league ball, he would end up playing for Joplin, Missouri, which wasn't too far. But uh, when he was a kid, his dad would take him to see the St. Louis Cardinals and Mickey jokingly said that his dad used to always drive 35 miles an hour no matter what. And so he said to get from here to the Cardinals game, it literally took them over a day to go. But that was the kind of dedication that he and his father had to baseball. Now let's go take a closer look at the house because they actually have some furnishings in the house and they have a giant plaque on the front that tells a little of Mickey's history here. Now, like I said, the Yankees, when they gave you a number, if you got an early number, you were expected to be a legend. And if you think about it, it's true because number one is Billy Martin. He retired the number number one. Number two was uh, Derek Jeter now. Number three, Babe Ruth. Number four, Lou Gehrig. Number five, Joe DiMaggio. Number six, Roger Maris. Number seven was Mickey. Number eight was Yogi Berra. So that's quite a collection of legends. Now let's read the plaque. Here it says the boyhood home of Mickey Mantle, where Mickey learned to play the game, 319 South Quincy Street. When Mickey was three years old, his family moved to this location. At the age of five or six, his father started teaching him how to hit. They used the tin barn as their backstop. Mutt, his father, would pitch righty, and Mickey's grandfather would throw lefty while teaching him the fine art of switch hitting. Every day, when his father returned home from the mines, he and Mickey would start batting practice that lasted until dark. They made up games to add some fun to Mickey's batting lessons. A ball hit below the window was a single, above the window was a double, the roof was a triple, and over the house was a home run. Mickey once said, I was the only kid in town that didn't get in trouble for breaking a window. <laughs> Mutt's dream and Mickey's hard work took him from the lead and zinc mining district in Oklahoma to the skyscrapers and bright lights of New York City. Mickey the Commerce Comet blasted onto the national scene in the 1950s to become a great American icon. 
He entertained the world with his boyish Oklahoma charm and his amazing Paul Bunyan-like heroics. His tremendous popularity is what sparked the massive sports memorabilia industry that continues to flourish this day. Wow. Now let's take a look inside. Like I said, they have some furnishings in there, so. Now if we go over to the side, we can get a view of inside the kitchen. So let's go over and take a look at that. We'll go over the side of the house. To me, it's just crazy because I mean, you just see like the, the paint stripping off and the wood chipping and you're just thinking that very well right there could be broken because Mickey hit a line drive there and busted that up. That's the kind of stuff I think when I come out to places like this. Here's inside the kitchen. How cool. What a piece of history. You can't, I mean, you can't be a baseball fan and not have respect for Mickey Mantle. That's just, I mean, one of the all time greats. Hey, somebody living under the house? I don't want to find out. Well, we can't look in this window. They've got the curtains drawn, unfortunately. Same here. And I think the bedroom was right in here because this was the living room that we saw already, so this probably would have been one of the bedrooms. Probably the only bedroom. And this is just too cool to me. I mean, look at this. That's Mickey Mantle's walkway. Man. Went on to be a Hall of Famer, a legend. And it all started right here, and specifically right here. I just had to take one more walk through the barn before I left. This is just too cool for me. It's just, uh, wow, wow. If you're close by, come visit. I don't know how much longer it's gonna be standing. I mean, but then again, people have probably been saying that forever, so. Cool, cool stop. Growing up a baseball fan, I'm so glad, not only that I get to see this, but I get to vlog it so that my grandpa gets to see it because he taught me everything about baseball, was responsible for my love of baseball, and every time I get to do any kind of baseball-related vlog, I always think of him and I always go, you know what, he'll probably never get to see it for himself, but now he'll get to see something like this and I know he'll enjoy it, so. Papa, I hope you enjoy this. I did just notice if you look at the roof, it's kind of bowing. It's starting to bow, so. Starting to see some weather damage here. You know, it just dawned on me what we got to do before we take off here. You know what we got to do. We got to stand up here, right where the Mick would have stood. And we got to act like we're taking some batting practice. Dad or grandpa throwing a heater this way. Taking a swing because I'm a lefty. Boom! Over the house. And then, of course, the great Mick would have practice both sides of the plate out here so now we'll do a righty as though we're batting looking ahead the heater coming down the pike boom over the house I wonder if you stand here and look long enough if you can see any baseball threading marks on the wall or anything on the outside of the house <laughs> So here's home run territory. If he hit it over the house, that was a homer. Now there are a few more things in town to see that are related to Mickey, so I want to go show them to you. But Mickey, as great of a player as he was, he was not an immediate success. He was drafted, I mean, he was signed by the Yankees for $1,100 right out of high school. He went to the minors, played in Joplin, did really well, and then when they had spring training, they were gonna bring him up. Casey Stengel was telling everybody just how great this guy was. And so when they brought him up to the majors, he was pretty bad. He did not do a great job at all. And there was one thing that ended up turning this around. They sent him back down to Kansas City to the minors again. 
and he had a heart to heart with his dad. So let's go to another location. I'll tell you about what happened there. As you might have guessed, we are heading out to the ball fields. Of course, where else would we go? Where else would you pay homage to Mickey Mantle in commerce? We've made it out here to the ball fields and the first sign you can tell they're paying respect to Mickey is here on the yellow foul pole. You can see in reverse lettering on the other side, it says number seven Mickey Mantle Field. And don't worry, there's more. So we're gonna take this walkway out to behind the field. They have a statue of Mickey out there. Kind of a nice little winding trail out there. You know, one little tidbit I'll tell you that I had heard was that the Yankees were so dedicated to keeping Mickey as a star and making sure that he had a great career that they thought he was partying a little bit too much with Billy Martin. And so they ended up trading Billy Martin away just to make sure that Mickey quit the carousing and he never did quit the carousing. He was always known for being a hard drinker and a hard partier and then still going out the next day and hitting the cover off the ball. I'll give you both sides of this statue so you can take it all in. Here it says, Mickey Charles Mantle, a great teammate. Then as we make our way around, it says, the Commerce Comet, CHS class of 49. And from over here, you can see that the field, of course, is named after Mickey Mantle, number seven Mickey Mantle Field. Now, one of the things this makes me think of is, think of how many nights and hours and minutes, days that Mickey stood where we stood today at that barn, looking out, swinging at the house. And then think of all those years later, how many years and hours and minutes he would have done the same thing as a Major League Baseball player in some of the greatest parks in the world and in what many say is the greatest park in the world, what was Yankee Stadium. And Mickey was just destined to be a baseball player. I mean, he was even named after his father's favorite baseball player, Mickey Cochran, who was a catcher for the Tigers. Now, I told you when we were over at the house that everything changed at one moment. And how that happened was, Mickey was sent down to the minors to play in Kansas City and his father decided to come visit him. And when his father came, Mickey said, Dad, I don't think I can do this. I think I wanna quit and just come home. Expecting his dad to be somewhat <laughs> on his side or somewhat, um, you know, feeling sorry for his son. And instead, his father said, okay, pack your things and let's go. You can go back and you can work in the mines with me and that'll be the rest of your life. And you can just quit now, that's all you got. Let's go. And uh, Mickey was kind of surprised by that response. I think he was expecting a little bit of um, support from his father and instead his father saying, you know, just give up, be a quitter. So they stayed up all night long and Mickey decided that he didn't want to give up and his father said, well, if you're not going to give up, then suck it up and show them how you can play the game. Go out and be the player you can be. And that turned everything around. He went on to be one of the greatest Yankees of all time. The great number seven. And here on the bricks, you can see where people have donated to have their name out here. And one of the very first ones I saw was great. It says, my heroes, Mick and my dad. Well, Lionhearts, we are gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope that you enjoyed seeing where the great Mickey Mantle got his start, how it all happened. And if you were a Mickey Mantle fan, you know, if you were a baseball fan, you have to appreciate this guy. I mean, it's just, it's inevitable that he was somebody that made the great game of baseball greater for everyone. And like I said at the beginning of the vlog, there were so many kids that were inspired to play by the great Mickey Mantle. I really wanted to come see this and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So thank you for watching. We will see you all tomorrow from somewhere else in Oklahoma. Have a great night and goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.